I know you're going to dig this. Ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome to the Funk Chronicles. I'm your host, Dr. Turk Logan from Logan Communication and the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. And I'm telling you, when we get into this interview, you're gonna, you're gonna, this is going to be a fun interview here. We're going to have some laughs and more laughs because the gentlemen I have, the two gentlemen I have, are very, very dear friends. They're from Dayton, Ohio. Way back. Way, way back. Way. One is... Thomas Shelby from Dayton, Ohio, and the other is Steve Shockley from Dayton, Ohio. Steven's out in California. We're Skyping him. Good morning, Steve. I'm doing okay, man. We're getting a little bit of feedback, but they'll take care of that in the, in the uh, studio. Let me talk to, to Tom a little bit. Tom and I have a little bit more history because um, when we started, yep. we, when Tom and I started, <laughs> You were probably still in diapers, to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> to be well, I don't know. Steve is a bit old, too. Yeah, but now he's not as old as we are, though. Correct. He's Correct. not as old Correct. as we are. But, but anyway, Tom, you and I go back to grade school together. Westwood. Great. Westwood. I tell you, Westwood in Dayton, Ohio. Man, that's, that's in the 60s. That was a long time ago. Tell me. Let's a, not tell them what. Yeah. Well, well, tell us about your, okay. your dreams and ambitions, and when did they start to evolve? Well, you know what, John? Believe it or not, my ambition was to play basketball okay. and baseball. Okay. Uh, I had always been around music because my mom played, she reads, and my dad sung. Yeah. We always had a piano in the house. I was never interested in it. I was going to be a basketball player or a baseball player. Okay. Westwood changed my life. All right. How did Westwood change your life? The first talent show I had ever gotten into was at Westwood. I got in as a backup singer. And uh, our uh, director, who would do the music for us, right. she didn't like the song. She said, you guys know anything else? I said, well, I know a song by the name, uh, the guy, Jackie Wilson. Okay. Baby Workout. Baby Workout. I did that, and the rest was history. And I tell you, man, because I remember one of the uh, uh, football coaches, Mr. Manus. Right, Mr. Manus. I remember Mrs. Fisher, the Ooh gorgeous wee. Mrs. Fisher. You remember her Come back on. in the seventh grade yes, at, at, at Westwood. So we, we have a great history. Stevie, let, when, when did you realize that, that, that you wanted to be uh, what you eventually became as a great musician? At what age? I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yeah. So. Now we're in the seventh grade. We move on to Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Island. Cultural mm. shock. Cultural shock. You know. But you know, a lot of people don't know, and they will when they see you Speaking and here. how dapper you are and how dapper you always are. Because in high school, we had a club called the Esquire. Esquire. You remember that? What you know about that? Hey, you were part of it. Yeah. That's you, why I know. That's I right. Was too. Yeah. But the, the mission of the Esquire is to be respectful. That's right. That's right. To our teachers. That's right. To and the young ladies. Out. That's right. And to be a gentleman. Yeah. And to be dressed all the time. Right. Suit and tie that's all right. the time. And that was before the magazine came out. That was before the magazine came out. The Esquires. The Esquires. And it was me and you and Philip Bass. Philip Bass. Chris and Jones. Chris, bless his heart. Who Chris passed Jones on. Who passed on. And there was Roger. Come on. That's Roger right. Smith. And there, that's right. There was uh, Fred Richardson. Rick, I was going to say the Fred Richardson. Richardson boy. I mean, we had his, his younger brother wanted to be so bad, but he was just <laughs> too young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we started at an early, early age, age setting early. the uh, format, exactly. yeah. the concrete format yes. on how we wanted to right. be and how we are now. Right. 
I look at you, not much has changed. Well, and same way with you, no, no, not much has changed. And that's what it is. That's yes. the spirit. And so now you formed in high school. What did you do in high school as far as music is music. concerned? Music. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Charles Spencer. Okay. I was scared as heck. <laughs> we People had told me from Westwood, don't get into Spencer. Don't go to Spencer. The thing about uh, Charles Spencer, he had perfect pitch. Right. Perfect pitch, okay? He played trumpet. I remember orientation. Right. I get tapped on the back. Said, your name Thomas Shelby? Yes, sir. I want you in my choir. I stutter. I try to lie. I can't get it on my schedule. Don't worry about it. See you tomorrow. A, B, periods. Remember we had A, B, and C? Right. And uh, the rest was, he was so far ahead of his time. John, he used to record practices. Well, you know, Mr. Spencer, like you said, Tom, was so far ahead of his time, and he trained some great musicians. You know, Junie? Yep. Junie, some of the Ohio okay. players, other members of the Ohio players. Plenty members from the Ohio players. And, and he was just a great person. Person. As, as you got yeah, he was. To know, he was, he was. A, you know, he 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 was a disciplinarian. Well, as I like that about him. As he should have been. Right, right. To keep everybody. And you on know track, what happened? Being that, focused. every time we went to the state competition, we won. Okay. Choirs, Glee Club. Right. We won. Stevie, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. When your craft started to evolve, what year? How old were you when your craft started to evolve? Well, I got into nightclubs when I was about 14 years old. And uh, what, what, what I did got you a guitar when I was 12. What did you play when you were 12 to 14 years old? <clears throat> what did I play? What instrument? Oh, well, you know, I was trying to be little Stevie Wonder. I had bongos, I had a harmonica. <laughs> and... Uh, that just let my mother know that I wanted to be in the music. Did mom support you when you were a young age and, and you wanted to be in the music business? Yeah, because I was playing out at the Oak Leaf Club till five in the mm. morning and I was like 14 he wasn't years old. Be in there. Well, you know, it's an interesting story about the Oak Leaf Club and uh, Dr. Logan and the Ohio Players. And so I might as well tell you that story now since you know, I was raised in Germantown, Ohio with my grandparents, mm. so I knew right my way around the, the, the woods in Germantown. And then as I got older, like you, I had no business being in the club. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> but one night I was in there, and, and the Ohio Untouchables were performing mm. with a group called, the opening group was called the Powder Puff Re Review. Review. And, you know, mm. the, 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 the transvestite is high profile yeah. today. Yeah. For obvious reasons. They did that dance, the booty green? Or yeah. <laughs> but 50 years ago, transvestites Ooh, were still we, around then. Then, that's right. And what these, right. these talented performers did, right. they danced on stage and they danced with boa constrictors and pythons and fr uh, frilly uh, right. uh, neck wraps. And the they, wraps. They, yeah, they put on a, I mean, a super show. So I'm sitting They at, would call them flaming now. Yeah, right. Well, I'm sitting at the bar and there's this woman with her back to me, long brown hair, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from <laughs> Roosevelt, so I'm good to go. Yeah, yeah, you're ready now. So I'm gonna buy this woman a, a drink, and I tap this woman on the shoulder, and she turned around and turned out to be a man. Trash, probably <laughs> chest pink. Stevie got some stories. I bet he does. I bet he does. And so I couldn't do nothing but laugh at myself, you know, <laughs> and strike up a conversation and, and then eventually ease out the chair. Yeah, right. And go home. <laughs> but they had plenty of men after them. Oh, I'm sure they did. I'm sure they well, did. So probably I, Brenda McNair that she that you tapped on the shoulder. <laughs> and it probably was. It, it probably was because you know I I, I was so embarrassed. I, I I didn't know who it was at right. the, at the time. But anyway, uh, we've had experiences, experiences. with transvestites. Years. 50, 50 years, years ago. ago. So when I see it today on TV, it ain't That's no big thing. Like they're some, making it building up Jenner. Yeah, Bruce. exactly. Come on, you know. But anyway, so 
you played at a very young age at the Oak Leaf Club. I visited the Oak Leaf Club to see the Ohio Untouchables and the Powder Puff Review. When did uh, the group start, Lakeside Express start to evolve? How did that, you know, one of you guys want to tell me about how that. Let Stevie start that, Steve, then I'll come in with okay, some Okay, Steve, you, you tell me about Lakeside Express. Well, we were um, in Dayton, Ohio, and this uh, uh, radio uh, record man from New Chicago, Eddie Thomas, Tom was the other half of Kurt Tom Records with Curtis Mayfield. And uh, he came down to Dayton and, and to see us because, you know, we had a little reputation going. And we were called the Nomads, well, we were called the Young Underground, you know, just the Young Underground, but we were, we were once the Nomads and the Young Underground. Okay. And we were called the Young Underground, and so they wanted us to go compete in this talent show thing. Um, but they didn't like the name of the group. And okay. So for one night, and I, a lot of people don't know this, for one night we were called the Equations 4 Plus 4. Okay. Um, that's because we had four singers and four members in the band. All right. Um, and that, that's when we changed our name because they didn't like it. So when we got to Chicago, right. The Kurt Tom deal fell through, and um, Eddie Thomas started his own record label, Lakeside. And so we were in his office, and you could see this newspaper or magazine or something across the lake called the Lakeside Express. You could see that from his office window. That's funny. And um, at that time, we had... Mark Wood's sister in the group, Shirley. So Shirley was originally a member, of the very first members of the Lakeside Express. And um, the record deal, even Eddie Thomas couldn't get his label off the ground. But check this out. Our songwriters was Chuck Jackson and Marvin Yancey. Now, they went on to be the writers for Natalie Cole and Whitney Houston. But they wrote, they was writing our first songs and something happened and it was a big fallout. And anyway, Lakeside Records didn't happen. So we went back um, to um, Dayton, Ohio. And we kept the name just because we all grew up at Lake, playing at Lakeside Park where the Palladium was. And so we said, well, that represents Dayton, Ohio, Lakeside Park. You know, we keep Lakeside Express. They had a train that ran around the park called the Lakeside Express, if you remember. I remember. Anyway, um, we kept that name. And as we, um, that name evolved every time we changed members, seemed like, because Shirley Woods, she didn't hang too long with all these roughnecks. So we brought back in Ricky Abernathy. And Ricky Abernathy was actually one of the very first nomads, you know. And when he left, Mark Woods took his place. Well, you know, that's interesting because historically, and, and, and Tom, you can jump in here as well, we all remember the late George Tuck, right. who was the owner of uh, the Lakeview Palladium. Mm -hmm. Lakeside was a great amusement park right, back in right. the 50s and 60s. And in the early 70s, it started just to phase out. Phase out. The, you know, the roller coaster was old and, 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 and the equipment was old. I only rode it one time. It was made of wood. It was made of wood. I don't think I got <laughs> on it at all. Because every time I see when that roller coaster, it was, roller, it was shaking and everything. Oh, no. I don't mm -hmm. think I got on it mm -hmm. at all. So Lakeside became the Lakeview Palladium. Palladium. Was George Tuck involved in the naming of Lakeside, the group? Did he, did he have any? No, uh, I knew George quite well. He was a bit older than us. Right, you know. a lot older. George had his hands in a lot of things. Right. Uh, but uh, no, not really. No, he didn't. Uh, okay. The story about the Lakeside, we had always thought about that anyway. Right. And it so happens uh, that uh, Eddie Thomas, 
okay. who was Curtis Mayfield's manager. Right. Uh, there was a contest in Chicago that the group had won right before I got with them. Me okay. and Shirley got with them. But anyway, mm -hmm. we end up there. And uh, Eddie said, well, you guys got to change your name. Right. You're not always going to be young. Right. And we were going in the Young Underground. Right, right. And the Nomads. Right. But anyway, long story short, and so me, Stevie, and Mark, we were out front, and we were recording on Lakeside Drive. Right. Right across the street. Right. With the Lakeside Press Company. Right. So we'd already had in our mind that we we're going to do something about a lakeside. A lakeside. Right? right? And so we came up with Lakeside Express. Okay. Okay. So that's where that came from. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you know, that's good because the history, you know, you guys could only straighten out the history right. because right. you are the history. Right. I remember when a dear friend of mine that was a friend of both of you guys, his name was Dick Griffey. Dick. Yes. Who was yes. president. A mentor. Yeah, who was president and CEO of Solar yeah. Records, The Sound of Los Angeles. He had you come out on tour a couple times, didn't he? He had me come yeah. out on tour, and when he flew in to Stouffer's, when he come signed out. you guys. Stouffer's, ooh, okay. you really old. So, boy, I tell you, Stouffer's, <laughs> I tell you, it was Stouffer's then. Yeah. And he was the nicest guy you ever want to meet yeah. from that perspective, because we had, I believe you guys already had some product out there we were playing, mm -hmm. but he came in. How did Dick end up with you guys? Whew, we had that. Uh, Steve, you want to uh, intervene on that? Yeah, Steve, you want to come in and talk about when Solar signs you guys? Yeah, that's cool. Um, well, we had done a stint with Motown, and Motown didn't uh, ever release nothing on us. Right, Wilson. So we left, and we, Dick Griffey was our manager. He really liked the group, and so... We went over to ABC Records, you know, and one of the Motown producers, Frank Wilson, took us over to ABC Records. Okay. And that's when we dropped everything. We were the Ohio Lakeside Express. Mm. We were the Lakeside Express. But when we went to ABC Records, we dropped everything, and that's when we officially became Lakeside. Okay. Uh, we did our first album over there at ABC Records. And we had a record that was starting to go up the charts, but um, the record company folded. You know, let's see, they had Shaka Khan, Lenny Williams, us, New Birds, <laughs> Billy Davidson, Marilyn McCoo, over there. And um, when the record company folded, Dick Griffey and Don Cornelius started Soul Train Records. And that sounded interesting, but we were kind of scared because none of them were known record producers or anything. We didn't know. But And Norman Whitfield, from, he had his own label. He was doing Rolls Royce and Stargard and all of them. And Norman Whitfield wanted us to be there. But he wouldn't let us write songs. He wanted to write all the songs and stuff. Um I understood it because we had never written songs before. Okay. But we knew we wanted to write songs because, I mean, Ohio Players was writing their songs. <laughs> Roger and them was writing their songs, you know. We figured we better start writing our own songs. That's the only way we're going to be successful because nobody knew how to capture us but us. You know? Okay. So Dick Griffey said, hey, look, y'all come with me over at Soul Train and, um, I'll let you write half your album, and in case you don't know what you're doing, I got the other half <laughs> to find some good songs, you know. And so we were we were up there to sign with Soul Train Records, and Don Cornelius asked us, "Hey, why y'all signing the musicians?" <laughs> because we was like a singing group with a backup band, you know, and they had never heard of a singing group signing their band. But we just knew that we weren't going to break up. Now, Dick Griffey says, shut up, Don. You know, uh, these guys want to sign nine guys. Let them sign nine guys, you know. Um, they still the same money. <laughs> so well, you guys have had, signed up, had all hit of after hit time. after hit all the way live and... You know, how many gold and platinum records did you guys have over the years? It was a few. It was a few. 
It was a few. I can't hear you. And if you add in uh, Stevie and Leon Silvers and my brother, because my brother worked with us in right. and out, I even remember. toured with I us. Remember. Tons. Right. Tons, you know. Well, one of the things that uh, I know, but a lot of people may or may not know here on the Funk Chronicles, is Stevie, you wrote some other songs for like the Whispers and some of the other groups, didn't you? Their biggest hits. Yeah, you know, Lakeside, you know, we were moonlighting a little bit just because, you know, we got to just try to get in the door and make a little money. And, yeah, I wrote a song that I started making up for Lakeside, but I got with Leon Silvers, and um, we were writing a song together, and the next thing you know, we had written, And the Beat Goes On, you know? Right. Right. And, and, and oh, yeah, I mean, um, and I sure, I'm sure that song's probably sold a million copies easy. If, or, or more. more. And, and um, that, that was just such a great thing. So, Tom, you are a uh, board member for the. Um, May I say something before we go a little further? Sure. You know, I like to tell people the truth. Right. Keep it real. We come from that school. Right. And uh, what a lot of people don't realize, Lakeside. We were the Rolling Stones of funk. Right. Here's what I mean by that. We didn't have a ton of major hits. Right. But nobody wanted to come on after us. Oh, wow. Our live show, because we were the first to mix a real band with real vocals. Right. You know, at that time and space that we were in, most groups only had one lead vocal. He'd get out there. You know, the band would try to step. Temptations, David Ruffin. Yeah, yeah. and that's the America's downfall that was with Motown. They right. wanted us to be a Temptations. Right, right. And we said, no, no, no. We're a group. Right. We're a group. And, and everybody performed. Yeah, and, you know, got to keep it real, man. Uh, nobody wanted, I mean, there's some major acts. I'm not going to mention their names. Try to unplug us. Well, I, it, I, it, that's, that's why they call it show business, you Ooh, know. Wait. And, and and it's not all a bed of roses or a yellow right. brick road out there Come on the on. road. You know, John. And so uh, you know, been there, seen it <laughs> from the other side, right. Right. and being on stage and emceeing and being backstage and whatnot. Uh, mm -hmm. Been out there with you know Rick James right. and, and some of the go. other people. So, but anyway, um, but you survived. Right. You survived. Right. And here it is, almost forty years yeah. later. Forty. And you guys, you, you know, I heard you talk about you, you, you're coming up on another gig coming up in a few few weeks. Talk about that. Yeah, we're going to be in Anderson, Alabama. Ooh, our schedule's pretty full this, uh, this summer. Okay. Uh, right after that, we're in Sacramento. Okay. We're there with uh, Coop now of okay. Confunction. Okay. And Faisal's going to be there. Excellent. Uh, July, the one I just mentioned to you, we got about three or four dates. Okay. Uh, the one closest will be Indianapolis for the Indiana Black Expo. Okay. Uh, Patty LaBelle's going to be there, the Isley Brothers, uh, DeBarge, us, Al Hudson, and Black Street. Okay. It's so going to be a two-day event. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a, a two-day event. Oh, yeah, be a two -day event. So by the grace of God, yeah, we're getting a lot of, we're getting a, you know, it's kind of easy because now even the young kids, they want to see real entertainment. And, 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 and it's nice because you've been through four decades. Right. You and can bring your grandmother or your granddaughter. Yeah, that's exactly right. You can bring that the, from, from those generation gaps right. and appreciate it. And, and the beautiful thing, and I was telling uh, Lester and, 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 and Zap, I took a position early in my career in 1982 mm -hmm by listening to two particular artists. One was Rick James, Super Freak, and the other was Prince Soft and Wet. Okay. And I had a premonition that I was not going to program music with blatant sex, drugs, and profanity in it. Come on, come on. And so I sat down with management, and they looked at me like deer in the headlight. Why, why wouldn't, I said, I don't think we should be putting this, the lyrics in people's minds. Later on, moving to Central State University, we had gone from, you were program to rap. director up there, weren't you? I was general manager. Okay. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, moved from hip hop to rap to gangster rap. Well, kids coming out of the inner city schools, the first thing they want to hear was rap music. I banned all rap music at Central State. 
and I went back to school and worked on my doctorate in 1993 and my research was violent music makes violent kids. That's right. That's, That's how I got my PhD. And the good thing about you guys, all the groups, Lakeside, Heat Wave, Come Sun, on. Dayton, Platypus, Shadow, um, mm -hmm. Roger, Zap, you know, Fazo, all the groups, I never had to worry about, about the, the lyric, lyric content. content. Never. Well, we grew up that way. Our thing was like this. If we couldn't sing it in front of our mother, yeah, we're not supposed to sing it. There you go. Or your, or your, or, or your, or the little, or your, your daughter. little, your daughter, your little brothers and sisters. Steve, what's your thing? What's your take on Larry Conte? Because I know you've written some great hits, mm -hmm. and all your hits have been good slamming hits. What's your take on that? Uh, I really couldn't hear that earlier part of it. Well, what, one of the things we were talking about, when you write a song, when a lot of artists today, when they write songs, they have to put sex, drugs, and profanity yeah. in that songs because they think that that sells. Well, we know sex sells, but you don't have to put it in the record that somebody's going to listen to a thousand times over and over and over again and then react and to impregnate it. Impregnate their mind with it. Impregnate their mind and then react to the music that they hear. You've written some great hits over the years. What's your take on putting negative lyrics in music? Well, I think that's the nature of, see, that's the nature of what they've learned from the streets. You know, the streets have gotten, at that time, was gangster and all of that stuff. You know, and Lakeside was a group that would never make a record that they mother would have a problem with. There you go. You know, so these groups today, they made, they made so much money that somehow moms would turn her back to the profanity and the sex and the, all of that stuff because their kids are making so much money, you know. So they let them go ahead and do that kind of stuff. And then a lot of these kids that were making this hardcore music, you know, they come from hardcore situations, you know, and uh, I can't hate them, but I didn't particularly like what was going on. You well, know? And, 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 and you as a musician <laughs> and a songwriter, it's understandable because you put the pen to paper and use your, your, your genius mind to write hits. I'm a programmer. Ooh, I'm wait. on the other side. Ooh, wait. You know, so Ooh, I'm going to see it after it come, becomes a record, right. and then I've got to make a decision if I'm going right. to play it or not. I'd like to say this, you know. we got I, about three minutes. Okay. I'd like to say this real quick. You're always going to have sex. Right. We know that. As you said earlier, sex sales. Right. I, look, I liken it to the difference in Hustler magazine, Playboy magazine. Right. You can talk about sex in a clean cut way, well, believe it or not. Well, and that's exactly right. There's a difference in lust and love. Well, that's, We that's like to point. talk about love rather than lust. That's why I say blatant. Okay, you're a board member for the um, Funk, Music. Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. What is your vision as far as putting this whole thing together, working with David Webb and some of the other members? Well. I think at one time or another, we all that's in the music industry, funk, right. had a vision about a museum. Right. The difference, David had a dream. Right. There's a difference. He saw himself. He saw the building. Right. And I felt that. He explained it. I felt it. I've been down for it because well, I had a vision. Here. That's right. That's why we're here today. That's why you're a part of it. Exactly. And I see it as a way and a means and an engine to show generations behind us and in front of us that it's a ballad. Leave, leave a good legacy for we had our talked about legacy earlier. and our grandchildren there you go. to recognize. And to take it, the music that we found, where we found it, further. Hey. That's the name of the game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking to two great musicians, Tom Shelby from Lakeside and Steve Shockley Great musicians from Lakeside, great guys, still performing 40 years later. 
whenever they're in your area, make sure you go see them. You're going to see a fantastic voyage. You're going to be taking on a fantastic voyage. <laughs> I like that yeah. I like that engine, <laughs> You're going to be taking on a fantastic voyage. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on thank the Funk Thank you for Chronicles. having us. Hey, man. Dr. Turk Logan for the Funk Chronicles. Cool. And also Logan Communication and the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. Like us on Twitter and Facebook. Like us on Twitter and Facebook. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.